Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, to both of you, I'm, I'm troubled today because of the testimony we had just a couple of days ago, which would indicate that even though there's enough blame to go around, there were a number of times where people acted like it wasn't their, their fault. Uh, Governor, uh, your emergency management uh, testimony from uh, the witness here was troubling because he acted like, well, you know, I didn't know, I didn't. And so, uh, Governor, do you believe that there were people who made mistakes within your agency uh, at, at multiple levels in terms of addressing the health and welfare of the people of Flint? Yes. Okay, thank you. Ms. McCarthy, I'm gonna ask you the same question because uh, the witness that resigned indicated that there was nothing that they could have done differently and there was no fault on her part or the part of the EPA as it related to this unbelievable, horrific event so do you believe that the EPA is partially at fault? I believe that we could have taken different action and been more aggressive. That's not yes. the question. Are you partially at fault, yes or no? I'm not playing a blame-shifting game, sir. It would be very easy so, for me So to, you do agree that you're partially that, at fault? Uh, we, we, the system failed. We were part of that system. All right. Let me go. Do you, both of them indicated that the rules with regards to copper and lead are somewhat ambiguous, that they needed a little bit more clarity. We've heard that. Would you agree with that, Governor? I, I would go much farther than that. It's a dumb and dangerous rule. Okay, all right. Uh, Ms. McCarthy, would you agree that the rules, the current rules as they are, are ambiguous, need they, more clarification? They definitely need clarification. They, they need to be strengthened, and we're taking a look at that, but they're feeling okay. clear about uh, what they're So let me stop you there, situation. because if you're taking a look at it, here's my concern, mm -hmm. because when anybody says there's nothing at fault, we started doing some research. Clean Water Safety, uh, Clean Water Drinking Safety Act 1991 requir required rules to be updated every six years. Yes. Do you know how many times it's been updated fully since 1991? I don't know. How many I, I do. I the answer is zero. Zero in terms of fully updated, it's zero. It was modified slightly in 2007. And so here we have the safe drinking water standards that needed to be updated, and yet the EPA did nothing about it. Now, I could go further to say, well, maybe the EPA didn't know, but we did a little research on that, too. And to quote, the GAO in 2006 said, indeed, that you needed to update your rules. Are you aware that the GAO has a problem with the co copper and lead Rules. I am aware that they were last updated in, in 2007 under the prior administration. Okay. That's what I'm aware of. All right. So let me ask you even further, because I went to your documents, which were actually regulation documents saying when you were going to update the rules. And so in 2010, you said that you were going to have a proposed rule in 2012 and a final rule in 2013. Long before this problem would have happened, if you just had stuck with your original time frame. The problem is, is I can go through multiple papers here and I can find that you never, you just kept changing the goalposts in terms of the rules. And in fact, even as recent as this last fall, you changed it again to say that not only are you going to do a rule sometime in the future in 2018, you don't even talk about a final rule. Now, do you not see a problem with the fact that the law requires you to do a new rule every six years, at least revisit it, and that you haven't revisited it in 10 years, and that you keep changing the goalposts? Do you not see some fault there? Well, the revisions actually started in earnest in 2012 or 2013. But you said, it, you, according we, to your own document, actually, you said you were going to have them done in 2013. Right. We have, we have a, a, a stakeholder group that's very actively told us that we cannot make tweaks to this. We have to make some substantive changes, issues that would have been helpful in this case. That does take more time than making small tweaks. 
And, and that is what we're working on now, and, and I'm glad we know even more today than we did before. We're going to take a look at it and get Okay, it well, let me, let me tell you why I'm concerned with that. In the same time about the small tweaks, yes. the EPA has passed 3,571 rules in that time frame while the people of Flint and maybe Washington, D.C. are waiting on a final rule. You... You have the Sir, wrong priorities, they, if, Ms. Ms. If McCarthy. I yield proper, back. If they had properly implemented the law as it currently exists, we wouldn't be sitting here today. As it currently exists, we wouldn't be sitting here today. <laughs> but you're in charge. You're the administrator. Actually, the state is in charge. No, of you're the in charge of the lead and copper rule. You're in charge of the lead. You think the governor's in charge of the lead and copper rule? You're in charge of the lead and copper rule, writing the rule. I'm telling you that we didn't need any change to the rule in order to have prevented this problem from happening. It was the way in which MDEQ actually interpreted it and implemented it that was the problem. MDEQ has said it. The, the governor's task force has said You're it. You're wrong. We're going to come back. Audit. We're going to come back to this. Let's Mr. recognize the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Boyle, for five minutes.